Back in the shop today, I'm Dave. And this week, I'm gonna start putting this windshield on. So a couple weeks ago, I finished putting in this doghouse here to cover up the transmission, and I finished painting that up. I also seam sealed it, so it's all airtight. And then I've worked my way around here to the battery box. So I've installed the battery box back here because there's no space in the front of this truck to put the dual battery setup in. So I have that as a sealed battery box and then it vents through, these, uh, through this pipe or this hose here to the rear of the cab. And these fittings here are just something that I uh, made up in, in CAD and then 3D printed and you know, it fits in there proper. And then also uh, a couple weeks ago, I was uh, lengthening up the wiring harness for this truck in here. So what I did was I got that underneath the floor. It's just underneath this one. And I've also found this has a permanent location for the power distribution control here. And what I got here is it's permanently hooked up in the back of this cab. And that way I can easily uh, work at the fuses, the relays. Uh, here's the alternator and battery hookup and then the powertrain uh, control there. That's for the, for the transmission harness. And that loops up into here. Get some light on that. Boom. And I got that mounted underneath the front cowl. So this is a sealed battery container here. And what I got on the side here is a master disconnect. So I can turn it on. And that uh, turns the batteries on to the whole machine. And then once I pull the lid off, I can just throw it on the seat over here. And then I can work away inside of this battery container. So this is uh, this is my dual battery setup here. And I got uh, I got your grounds, and I got um, I got my two watt cables here. These are a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger cables. And then I got my battery disconnect there, and that provides enough power to get this thing started. So I have this vent installed because when sealed lead acid batteries are charging, they emit uh, some gases. I can't remember which ones, but anyways. That's not gonna be in the cab, so I got it pitched out through the back there. And then coming around to the front here, uh, this is the transfer case shifter knob, and I got that installed. And that works good. So now that you're all caught up, now I'm gonna start working at putting this windshield back on. And also, I'd like to put this cab, this cab roof back on as well. I'll have to lengthen it, and I'll address that once I get on that back on the truck. So these are the parts I need to put the windshield back in. I got these left and right windshield pivots here, and this is this one has a hole in it, so this one's the driver's side. What this is for is so the vacuum hose can go through go through the the pivot point, so the windshield can all can go down. But the vacuum hose is used for the uh, windshield wipers. So I'll show you how that works later on. And to give myself a fighting chance, I put new hardware on it. These are fine thread. Focus, buddy. There it is. These are all fine thread. And I chased all these uh, all these threads out with uh, with a tap and die set. And then also where they're required here, I chased all those out just so just so I don't have to fight with reassembly. So here we go. Oh, windshield's in. Now I want to make sure that it all fit back together before I take it back down again for paint and then chase these seals down and all that fun stuff. And then I went to show my wife that the windshield was in and she said, there is no way you're gonna be able to get that vehicle out of this garage. And I was like, babe, come on, it's gonna fit. And then she was like, not a chance. Then I remember the past Dave said the future Dave was going to have this problem. So originally these Dodge M37s are quite a tall truck 
when compared to modern vehicles nowadays. So a large obstacle that I have is my garage door is a seven foot garage door and I think with the, with the overhang underneath of it, I think it's actually a six foot 10 opening. And I guess this all goes to say that once I put the larger tires on it, some 37s and some new rims, this truck's gonna be a lot taller than, uh, than that door over there. So being able to get it out of the, out of the shop, I might have to roll the, uh, I have to roll the windshield down and uh, maybe put the hard top on outside. Well, future Dave's here, and I still have that problem. So I busted out my measuring stick here, and the truck is right now 80 inches tall, or six foot eight. And my garage door clearance is 82 inches, or six foot ten. That kind of reminds me of that story that I read a couple of years ago about a guy who built a car in his basement. And I think I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to ignore the obvious and keep building it. So now I'm going to pivot here. I'm going to work back in the cab. I'm going to put the seats in and then the console and then finish this up with putting the doors on. And then later I'm going to take the ding out of this, bump this bumper and get that installed also. I'm going to forget about my problem here and leave that for later. And then I'm going to pivot to working on the box back here. I feel like once the box is done, then that'll give me a nice spot so I can stand on, so I can eventually put this cab on. That's not going to magically solve my garage door problem, but maybe a convertible is where it's at. I know that the American version of these M37s came with a soft top, so maybe that's a route to pursue. At least till I get a bigger garage.